Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. So, I got a new box here. We're going to open this up, take a look at. This is a differential probe, or high voltage differential probe, I think they're often referred to. Um, I think that would be called isolation probes, because really that's the benefit of them. They isolate your measurements. So when you're taking your scope probe, you don't have to worry about this guy anymore. This guy is isolated from the scope so that you don't have to worry about it. Do you need one of these? Nah, you don't really need one. Um, I got one because I just want to show you guys in case you have an idea you might want one. I just want to show you what, you know, how they work and the benefit of them. But um, you can use two of your scope probes to get, do a differential reading. You know, you just tie these together on your circuit and then you put probe A channel one on one part of your circuit and if you're measuring across say a transistor put this on one side put the other probe on the other side and use your scope and subtract one from the other there's your differential reading so yeah you don't need one of these guys you don't need one but if you do a lot of those kind of readings they're convenient so and i also kind of thinking about coming up with the design so that we can build one of these our own so I kind of need a gold standard so that we could compare it to. But, and you know, and there's some other things that come up where, in videos where I need to compare this with the other method just so you can see the difference and why why sometimes these are beneficial. So, uh, so I got one. We're gonna bring the camera over here, take a look inside the box, hook it up to the scope, and take a couple readings. So make a quick video just to kind of you know, initiate ourselves to this thing and we'll use it in the videos to follow. As a matter of fact, the next video in the power supply design series, I think it's number eight, um, we have these smaller caps hooked up to this transformer, this power supply. We're gonna hook up this big old bad boy, this big capacitor mate, and we'll use this and that video to demonstrate it. So, you might wanna watch that video too. All right, guys, let's jump it over here, bring the camera up, and take a closer look at it. Okay? All right, thanks. All right, guys, so let's just open up the box, see what's inside here. There we go. That's actually a nice manual. Uh, high voltage differential probe. Wow, that's like a book. Holy cow. Hopefully it's in 20 languages. That's a lot to read. Yeah, okay, there's Chinese. Okay. Wow, that's still... Boy, there's a lot of information in here. It's kind of crazy. Um, okay, so we got the differential probe. And uh, those are nice. These long grabbers. Those are nice. So you reach in and grab things. Okay, that's cool. Um... Okay, this looks like the heck let's open this up um, all right so this is kind of an interesting set I can see being seasoned here and also bananas so yeah we got both okay so this BNC to BNC that will go from this end I'll go from this end to your scope and then uh, these, of course, will go on this end, and these little guys here, these big guys, holy cow, look at the size of those jaws. Wow. So, I guess you got your option, big old guys like that or, or that. Um, so, what I like is it has three settings, X20, 50, and 200. So, 20 times 50 and 200. So, uh, some of these high-voltage probes... They expect you to read high voltage with them, so you know they have these high settings. But this one actually has a small setting too, so that's nice. And the small one is good for plus or minus 70 volts, and uh, max AC is 50 millivolts RMS. Um, so yeah, you got your max AC readings down here, you got your max AC readings here, and max DC re readings here. So plus or minus 8 volts is the max you're supposed to put into this guy. External supply, 9 volt, 200 milliamps. So, that's what's in this box, I suppose. Um, 
works with it. Looks like, okay, the little wall wart power cord. Okay, so. Alright, so, yeah, you have to power it externally. And here, let's look at, let's look at the other end of this. So, plus minus, you know, it's cat 3, 600 volts AC. The back of it has a UL and some other agencies. Cat 3. It's made in Taiwan, it says. And that's the Canadian, or the CE mark. Please read manual for safety. I think I might take a quick look at that manual, actually. So, all right, so that's the, that's differential probe. Kind of a big, big guy, right? Okay, let's see what it does. Hey guys, so this instruction manual actually turned into something a little bit smaller than, I mean, it, I mean, it's pretty thick, a bunch of pages here, but it actually turned into something small. It's got um, five different probes here, and this happens to be the DP25. It's a Pintech DP25. So, it's this guy here. So it's actually only like six pages. So I'll just walk you through them real quick here. Um, first page is safety precautions. Talks about what's supplied with the, uh, the guy. So here we are, the features. Um, specifications, that's kind of what we're interested in. I get. Goes to DC, of course, to 25 megahertz. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, and that's for 50 or two, tw 200 times. And then 20 times it's 15 megahertz. Okay, so the attenuation, the three different attenuations, accuracy plus minus 2%. It talks about when you, if you use this with a DMM, you can get 1%. So if you have a conversion to go to DMM, and it says using the PL10, which I guess is a converter to a DMM. So here's some of the safety voltages, and the other thing I thought was really great was the rise time is 14 nanoseconds for the 50 and 200, and 23 nanoseconds for times 20. That's that's pretty decent, I think. And rejection, 60 hertz is 80 dB, which is awesome. 60 and 1 meg is 50 dB, so yeah, it all looks pretty good. Um, should be pretty low noise. And then they have some operating procedures talking about that. And uh, the input voltage range. So times 20, it's 140 volts peak to peak. Times 200, you go 1400 volts. And then it has kind of this table here for your conversion. So if you put in times 20, for instance, and if you put your scope on times 20, it's just a one volt per division. It's just a one for one. But it kind of gives you this table you know, to show you what your factor is going to be. So, all right. Just wanted to go over that real quick with you. Okay, guys, let's, let's see what this thing can do. Okay, guys, so I'll just start with this setup down here. I plug these in. They fit in nice and firmly. And by the way, these leads that come with it are, are like a silicon. They're very flexible, very nice feel. So, yeah, the uh, probes are nice. You know, these things... Going, you know, really nice and smooth, but kind of, I mean, easy, but they do have kind of a snug uh, snap in there at the end. Not quite a snap, but just kind of a snug fit. And again, the BNC connector, I mean, it's a snug fit. That's, you know, it has a really nice snug fit to it, and it rotates, so it's got nice, you know, it's nice free feel. And this power cord, by the way, uh, this thing is probably seven, eight feet long. So I've got it stretched over to the wall, no problem. So, yeah, nice meter. It feels really strong, like really durable. But, okay, so we got that, we got this. Now what we have is the other scope. So I have this plugged into channel uh, two on the scope. And then on this guy, I've got channel one, okay? So now, look at this, I've got the little return, the low ground lead tied to the ground of a function generator, and I've got the scope tip on this side, okay? So we're gonna look at that signal. Now if I was gonna look with channel two at that signal on the scope, if I had another probe, I'd have to put it, the grounds in the same spot, right? So this is my, my return leg, my negative one. All right, guys, so, 
I had to sit here and pause for just a second. I saw these little earth ground symbols uh, referenced to each one of these, which is kind of weird in a way. I think what they're saying or suggesting is you have 600 volts between between the earth ground, where this is going to be earth ground, uh, this BNC right here. That thing there is going to be tied to the scope to earth ground. So I guess they're saying you have 600 volts max between here and this, and 600 volts between here and here, and then you have a thousand volts between these two pins. So I guess that's what that's saying. But I'm always <laughs> one just to be careful. Okay, uh, that's you can hear that beat. That's my Tektronix meter over there. And what I want to do is let's see, take this. Put it on one. What I want to do is go to this shell. Okay, yeah, isolated. I mean, it has to be isolated. This thing would be useless if it wasn't. So, just want to verify that just to show you. So, that is isolated. So, this guy going to the scope, this ground is not tied to my probes. So, that means that. These probes, I can put them anywhere I want. I can put the return to this and here, or I can go the other way. Now, if this was going into channel 2 with a normal scope probe, then I could not do that. But here, I'll just demonstrate this. So I can go minus to plus and plus to minus. And let's go up to the scope and take a look to see what happened. Hey guys, so um, there's my scope probe, a little pink collar, and here's the the differential. And it also has a collar, by the way, I can color code those. It didn't come with any of those rings, but I've I've got spares on it, you know, from the other bags, of course. I got four probes and a whole bunch of collars, so I can color code this. So alright, so let's just go to the setup. Alright guys, so I've got the channels both positioned center. See if I just lift that, so I just push those in. That's how I centered those. So now what I want to do is just verify their setup right. DC one meg, inverts off full bandwidth. Probe is 10x. I've got a switchable probe on this channel, and it's in the 10x setting. So now we want to look at the differential probe. So let's go to channel two, DC one meg, full bandwidth. Um, and 10x so we want to change that um, come up here and whoops 20x so we'll select that turn that off turn off the menus all right so now I think all we have to do is let's hit the solo set I've got the differential probe on the x20 setting so let's hit auto set all right guys that's kind of funny um, I actually grabbed the wrong coax. I grabbed the one going into my uh, Keithley instead of the Siglant function generator. So let me swap those. There we go. Okay, now let me hit the auto set over here in the top corner if you can see where my thumb is. Auto set. Well, wow, this scope auto sets so fast. I just, wow, I just can't believe how fast it sets. Now, this waveform I'm doing is kind of a crazy waveform, so wasn't sure what to do. And you can see the crazy waveform, but that's it. So, and you know, it automatically spaced my channels part. I can bring them up here so you can kind of look at them both. So, I think the trigger's on this guy. There you go. Uh, differential probe. It's, I can spread that out again, look at those things, and now here let me freeze that whoops let me freeze that for you now you see how they're inverse of each other that's because I've got the plus to the minus and minus to the plus so that's what you can do with differential probe you hook it up any way you want and it's just isolated so you can see how it's now if I I'm gonna just you won't be able to see what I'm doing but I'm gonna go ahead and take the differential probes and hook them up and the same polarity as the other scope okay now let me take it off run stop and now you can see they're in phase with each other 
Okay. So now they're in phase. They're both doing the same thing. So that's that's what a differential probe does. Now I can place these guys in the center of the screen. See they're right on top of each other. So they're reading the same amplitude and everything, which they should because I've taken care of the multiplication factor correctly on both channels. So there you go. By, by the way, incidentally, uh, this GWN stick, you can see how there's an undo auto set. So that's pretty cool. Then it has this mold fit screen and AC priority. So anyway, uh, just kind of some cool stuff. All right, so this was just a quick demonstration to show how you can hook up your different probe any way you want. And by the way, let me just bring it up and see that red LED? I didn't have it turned on before. I have to rotate this on. So it's in times 20 position. And you see the red LED right there for power. And then over here it's for over range. So if you go over the range, there's a safety setting and turns turns on this LED by my thumb right here. You can see it's off. But you can see that guy's nice and red. All right, thanks. I hope that was helpful. So if you like this, if this was valuable to you, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.